is NVIDIA GTC uh, 2023. I mean, yeah. 36 blogs and press releases, Paul, uh, four days, but I'm going to give you five minutes. We're going to give you five minutes to talk about it. Now, what, <laughs> what were the highlights uh, from your point, uh, your point of view? I mean, you know, they did a lot of automotive stuff and Omniverse and yeah. IoT and, and <laughs> well, Hey, yeah. we're here to talk about data center. Yeah, it's, tell, a, it's, tell it's us about what they did. Yeah, it's a it's a great time to be uh, involved with uh, AI right now. It's also kind of a bad time. Last night, uh, my 13 year old uh, granddaughter uh, was talking to one of her friends, and they were talking about GPT. Uh, I walked in this morning, and my wife was uh, had the laptop in front of her watching uh, CNBC. And when I passed her, she said, "Do you know anything about GPT?" So I come my in my office this morning and turn on the news and what's on? Of course, GPT. So, so it's a good right. time. Two two of the really interesting things that uh, Nvidia announced uh, uh, at GTC was, uh, I think, you know, what's really going to impact the uh, uh, democratization of uh, of AI is a they announced a, a cloud based AI supercomputer. Yeah. And. Um, it's going to be uh, the, the the core components of it, of course, are are the uh, NVIDIA H100 uh, Tensor Core GPUs. These things are monsters. Uh, uh, they've got uh, in each in each one they've got uh, 640 gigabytes. Um, you can put you can stack these things together. The uh, NVIDIA uh, GPUs you can stack them together. You can put 256 of them together. And uh, it includes a, a transformer engine that can uh, uh, solve up to a, a trillion parameter uh, language model. So, so it's going to be really interesting. <clears throat> each, uh, like I said, each instance has got uh, uh, eight of these uh, H H100s, uh, and the, each instance starts at, at around thirty-seven thousand dollars. So yeah. it's got everything integrated into the uh, cloud like and. A car. Forms a basis for another offering that they've got called uh, NVIDIA AI Foundation, mm -hmm. and the AI Foundation consists of uh, uh, basically three foundation models that uh, uh, enterprises can come in and and use on the cloud. Um, they've got uh, uh, one called uh, Nemo, one called uh, Picasso, and one called uh, Neo Bio. So uh, Picasso is uh, is a uh, art uh, language model. Um, uh, ne uh, Nemo is a, a large language model that you can uh, enterprises can come in and, and use their own proprietary databases and whatever to uh, construct their own generative AI models. And uh, the uh, they've got the bio, which uh, is uh, molecular and uh, protein based. So they've got a huge array of uh, Generative AI models that uh, it's definitely going to impact the market, and it's going to create a lot of research. And I imagine a lot of breakthroughs are going to come through with this stuff. So it's all good. Yeah, you know, I'm going to comment on the business model. This was my biggest aha of, of this entire thing, which is if you look at both um, NVIDIA DGX Cloud and NVIDIA AI Foundations, these business models are 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 sold by NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. and fulfilled at the hyperscaler, okay? <laughs> Azure, GCP, and OCI. Yeah. There's no yeah. AWS in there, okay? Yeah. And <laughs> NVIDIA takes the revenue yeah. uh, for that mm -hmm. uh, as well. So uh, in essence, they become an IaaS provider that's distributed through uh, three out of the top four clouds, just not the biggest one. Yeah. And the second thing with AI foundations, what's your alternative is, is mm -hmm. paths, right? So what they've set up is, is a PaaS model. So they've gone from, and, and if you think about it, the timing of this is extraordinary. Like when can you do something like this? You do something like this when uh, the current state of, I'll call it scaled competition is low, right? There's a lot of, of competitors. There, there's, there's a, uh, to NVIDIA AI, there's AMD, there's Tenstorm, there's Grok, there's mm -hmm. like GraphCore, 20 other other companies out there but at scale intel right uh with uh with habana and you know what what they do um 
on Xeon with uh, with some of its special blocks. But this is when when your stock is high and not just not the real stock price, but the proverbial stock price, you can do this stuff. On one hand, right, Paul used the word democratization. On the other hand, I could be like moving up vertical integration, baby. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's just say somebody comes in with a better hardware uh, platform, which, by the way, AMD has some incredible AI hardware and so does Intel. But it's the developers that the de facto standard is yep. cool, right? Yep. So now NVIDIA is taking this a next step. That's right. And, yep. and uh, you know, it, going up vertical integration, and I just find it absolutely fascinating. Uh, there was a, an analyst Q&A with uh, Jensen I attended yesterday. He was very clear. He's like, see what we did in gaming. We created what we thought was the greatest experience for gamers. Mm -hmm. And then we, we distribute that through people. We do a ton of software. Uh, and by the way, you know, you know, my son, uh, who is a hardcore gamer, uh, he is locked into their software platform right. and it'd be, it'd be hard to get off. So he wants to run that same play, uh, on data center AI. And I find it fascinating. Yep. Uh, that, what's amazing to me is the, um, the timing. I mean, you know, months before you've got, uh, Open AI dominating the uh, the media and and the public's attention with GPT three, yeah. and then Nvidia comes out with a complete package. <laughs> right. I mean, it's totally totally yeah, amazing. It's I, yeah, I, I commented on my earlier morning uh, podcast, which is is this just timing? Is it luck, or do people make their own luck? Yeah, I, I think Nvidia has works very closely with the research community. Yep. And in a way, they they enabled this. And I went back uh, two or three GTCs, and NVIDIA had this curve showing the up and to the right nature. Yep. Actually, we did over here. I'm reversed. Up and to the right nature of how big these models were getting. So yep. they telegraphed it, yep. and yep. they told people. Also, you have I've seen SaaS companies come out of the work, woodwork that they're saying, oh, I've used... Um, We've used natural models uh, for, or sorry, foundational models for three years. That was like a, that was an aha. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, so uh, it just captured everybody's imagination to where your 13 year old granddaughter and your wife is talking about it. Um, I, I have yet to get these questions, but uh, NVIDIA is going to completely <clears throat> clean up yep. Um, yep. on this. And I'm very interested yeah. to see. What AWS's reaction uh, is going to be uh, to this whole thing? Yeah. Uh, Thirty-seven, thirty-seven thousand dollars a pop. They can't make them fast enough, and no. their brand is strong enough that Azure, OCI, and GCP are offering NVIDIA branded solutions. That that says it all, right there. Pat. They're not cleaning up; they've cleaned up. <laughs> yeah, every cloud service has got has got six elements to it. They've got pre-trained models. They've got frameworks. They've got vector databases, personalization, uh, optimization, in inference engines, APIs, and plus they support it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's yeah. an amazing offer. I think. And I'll, and I'll just, yeah, I'll just add as well. I mean, I know this is our data center podcast, but I'm also impressed with what they're doing within service provider, scientific computing. I mean, they're just. I mean, not only are they just, you know nailing it with the with the timing and the package but they're going multi-vertical and there was an announcement with AT&T where they're helping AT&T with intelligent truck rolls and helping them you know deploy their 5G network uh, cell sites faster and more efficiently and so they're just from my perspective boy you know Jensen and the team they're just knocking it out of the park I think Pat you hit it you hit it really well it's the you know every there are a lot of really good competing uh, hardware platforms out there, but and this has been true for the last ten years or so. CUDA is where they they staked, you know, a lot of investment. And you know, you go into any university, you know, computer science program, and you know that's what the kids are are learning, right? Um, and they're coming out, and that's what they're doing. It's like they they've done an amazing job of building that ecosystem and enabling it. I left, uh, I left AMD about 12 years ago, and um, 
the previous five, right after we had bought uh, ATI, we were banging our heads against the wall, which is, hey, what else can we do with a GPU? <laughs> right? And and you know we were investing in, in in some basic research. We were investing in colleges, but what Nvidia did is they programmatized it. Yeah. Right, first GTC I attended, it was after I had left AMD. I walked into a booth there, and and back when people used to print things, they had a book of applications that were CUDA optimized and enabled. Yeah. And I looked at that book, and I'm like, have they won yet? <laughs> did, did they just win? And and that reminds me of of how uh, Project Silver Lake with AS400 with IBM was born, which was mm -hmm. they didn't beat digital on the mini computer because of the hardware. And by the way, that deck hardware, uh, PDP11, and, and those were amazing, amazing yep. things compared to I guess the S360 uh, mainframe at IBM. But what they didn't have, the Project Silver Lake and the AS400 had was this giant book of applications yeah. uh, that, that, that were optimized for it. So um, interesting stuff. Any other comments on, uh, on, on GTC related to the data center? Well, All right. Let me, let me just throw one more thing in. That I, the fact that they've got so many, I, I think this is a, basically a historic moment in, in AI, what they've done, but they've already got Adobe, Getty, and images, Shutterstock, and a whole bunch of other customers that are yeah. using this. So taking the proprietary database, creating yeah. another generative AI using NVIDIA's cloud AI supercomputer, yeah. but they're using their, their own proprietary data to create these. Yeah, think about the conversation Amazing. too with NVIDIA, which is like, okay, yeah. we're the arms dealer. We have right <laughs> now available the ability to get you in the game on. Yeah. Right. Yep. And oh, hey, what's your story to your shareholders? That's right. Right. Yep. On this, what's the story to your board when they ask you, hey, what are you doing in generative AI? Even though they've never asked that question before, and video shows up. Yep. Right. So, so yeah, I'm so glad you added those because the big question, at, and I had this months ago about this whole generative AI thing is there is no free lunches. You can't just steal data and train on it. Yeah. And 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 call it a day. You just can't do that. Um, and and what we found is that a central point of consolidation on some of the planet's most valued content uh, mm -hmm. goes through uh, Nvidia. Yeah. 